Good afternoon. I'm personal injury attorney Jeff Edelman, and this is another edition of Questions for Lawyers. I'm honored to have my friend Neil Rumback with me today. Neil is a tax attorney, and with April 15th right around the corner, who better to have on the show? Right, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. I'm this. sure. I, well, listen, I'm, I'm sure that you are very busy this time of year, so I know that everybody is appreciative of you coming on here and doing that. Can you tell uh, the people watching a little bit about your education? Because, listen, I, I went to law school. I got my law degree, but uh, you went and got a little bit more. And can you tell us about that? Absolutely. So I went to the uh, University of Florida Law School. And um, many of the classes I wanted to take that weren't necessarily tax classes, like estate planning classes, classes dealing with drafting certain documents, required that as a prerequisite that you take a basic income tax course, mm -hmm. federal income tax. Um, I had no background in it. I was actually a criminology major in college. I had no accounting background or finance background or anything like that. Oh. And I, <clears throat> I took the course and I realized as I got into the technicalities of the tax law that um, I really enjoyed examining them, that I really enjoyed seeing. It was fascinating to go through. I mean, I'll admit I'm, te I'm a geek. I'm a tax geek and I'm proud yeah. of it. <laughs> so well, um, you're in the right field. So I really enjoyed examining things and seeing uh, how, if you go into detail, you can help clients reduce issues and, and, and save money to me. That seemed fascinating to get a, an end result like that, if possible. And um, I started taking more and more classes in tax as a result at, when I was at the University of Florida. Um, the University of Florida has a great tax program. I think they're number tax, two in the country yeah, or something. Or number three. Right. And uh, ha had some great professors who really inspired me to move forward. Um, and I hope I make them proud now because they were really, really wonderful. Um, you told me that uh, somebody uh, wrote one of your textbooks. Who was that? Oh, right. Uh, yes, uh, 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 Elizabeth Warren, of all, of all people. So Senator right from Massachusetts. Senator from Mass a presidential candidate. She, she wrote one of my textbooks on consumer law, which is, if you follow, something she really is passionate about. Wow. Um, so she actually wrote the textbook. She actually wrote the textbook, yes. That's pretty really interesting. Well, let, let's be honest, though, Neil. Um, you're a really friendly guy, but people are coming to see you because they don't want to see this guy. IRS. Yeah, I couldn't resist it. I'm a wrestling fan. I don't know if you remember this guy. Yeah, this is right. the Erwin R. Scheister. Correct. Okay. He's coming to... Um, put a tax lien on your property. You are there to protect people from the Internal Revenue Service, correct? Correct. Okay. What can the IRS do to you if you don't pay your taxes? Right. So I'll just, and I'll, I'll go back quickly to also say that when I finished up, then I went to the University of Miami. I got my uh, master's of law and taxation. So I did an extra year um, focusing on different taxation. Yeah, so, that's the LLM. So that's the LLM. So that's um, and, and and so I came out with a, 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 a got a lot out of the program, got, gained a lot of knowledge. Now, um, I just wanted to point that out. But no, no, I, and I appreciate that, and, and that's really that's important because um, you don't just have a Florida bar, you don't have a, just a degree, a JD, but an LLM and taxation um, that gives you that extra expertise in tax law. That's why I asked you to be here. But getting back right. to getting back to our uh, that scary IRS, right. if you don't follow the rules, um, what can the IRS do to you? Well, the IRS um, I see as a possibly the most powerful a, a collection agency, um, maybe in the world, but certainly in the United States. Sure, and uh, uh, has the backing of the federal government behind them, so that have a lot of power um uh, taxpayers have rights but at the same time if you don't pay your taxes they can assess back taxes and then they can also go and um whatever you don't pay then usually is subject to interest mm -hmm. that uh compounds very very quickly and then uh civil penalties 
um, eventually it could get to the point where uh, they do actually collect on you. Um, they can actually get a hold of your bank accounts if they find the information and garnish your wages. Um, they could actually, if you have a car, they could just show up and repossess it. You know, uh, it, it usually doesn't get to that point, but collection. And then, it, it, you know, immediately when you owe taxes, you also, um, the IRS will usually file a notice of tax lien in the county records. They're not a good enemy to have. So they're not a good enemy to have. And then really, if you're extremely egregious, then we're dealing with the, the, the penalties get much, much worse. But we're also dealing with uh, with uh, criminal issues. Absolutely. Which is something to have in mind. It, it can be a very, very serious thing. Well, don't they always say uh, the police, they could never pin it on Al Capone? But at the end, the tax man got Al Capone. <laughs> That's exactly Isn't that right. right? Right, and it's come up now again with uh, you know um, with that college admission scandal and and and, and, and Becky, you know, where they're saying that uh, Laurie Lachlan that they're saying that well, you know, they could have committed some tax fraud there too. Wow, and it's going to be very very interesting. So to a certain extent, the services that you offer could keep somebody out of jail. But to a certain extent, yes, and I think that's always always important to keep in mind, even if it it doesn't appear likely. Um, and it's important to consult with a tax attorney in addition to an accountant or someone else, because the tax attorney has, as an attorney, um, a much broader scope of privilege. So things you tell an attorney, um, many more things you tell an attorney are protected from. Uh, admission in court or at, at, in an agency. Um, uh, CPAs have some privilege, but nowhere near as much as attorneys. So um, if you really want to have open dialogue and, and really figure out the best way to approach your situation, it's good to involve an attorney. Many times CPAs uh, with whom we work will say to the person, hey, you may want to talk to an attorney on this issue. What would you say one of your biggest referral sources would be CPAs? Yes, absolutely. We definitely refer back and forth. Now, I understand that you you came bearing a gift for me today, which um, <laughs> yeah, Jeff. You know, um, <laughs> what what is it? Neil? Um, yeah, you know, it looks like this came in. It looks like you've gotten been audited. Oh my goodness! Look at this. It's an audit. Now, I didn't really get audited. This is a real audit, though. As you can see, it's a letter from the Department of the Treasury. And this is an actual audit notifying somebody, one of your clients that was audited? Yes. Okay, well, let me ask you this. There's a guy I know, uh, let's just call him Donald, okay? And he says that he doesn't want to release his tax returns to the public because he's under audit. My question to you then is, would my f friend Donald have received a letter like this? Yes, he, he likely would have received a letter, probably many letters. Okay. <laughs> by a certified mail. By a certified um, mail. Usually by a certified mail. It's well, yeah, uh, the IRS usually will initially contact you via certified mail or via mail at least. So they don't call you up on the phone, hey, you're under audit. Very, very rarely. You have to watch for recent scams who kind of call you and say that because the IRS is generally not going to operate that way. Right. Um, and they're certainly not going to threaten you with uh, that if you don't pay, you're going to be immediately arrested. You're going to get a piece of paper. Right. Right. right? Correct. You're, you're usually going to get a piece of paper. Definitely, a piece of paper will usually arrive via mail. Definitely. Uh, 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 most, uh, most of the time, I'd say via certified mail. And uh, you're not going to receive um, emails either. So when you not email. when a when a potential client comes to you uh, who's under audit, what is some initial advice that you give them? First thing as a tax attorney that I was taught is to ask if they have them um, some to some don't or can I see your tax returns um, that that were audited, and maybe a year or two before, maybe a year or two after, depending on it. Take a look at the tax returns. Take a look at. Uh, uh, that audit that you, uh, uh, this thing, my gift when you got audited. <laughs> um, see what the IRS, because the IRS is going to tell you you're audited. So they're going to want to set up a time to meet and resolve the issues, and they'll tell you which items they are examining. When they um, set up an appointment to meet with you, is it 
like an under oath statement or like a deposition or is it just is it informal it is in for it's a it, it, it is informal um uh, you, you you are uh, uh saying things subject to penalty of person. So you are under but, oath. But unless you are summons, which su summoned, receive a summons from the IRS, um, you don't have to be present. So you can have an attorney present for you. Oh. And, uh, you know, I, I usually encourage that. Yeah, I, I that, can understand I why. That some, you know, m most clients are better off. Um, what do all the, ju the, the judges always tell, tell the uh, jury? What the attorneys say is not evidence. And what Correct. you say is not evidence. So it's worth it to have you there as a mouthpiece. Right. I mean, look, every, you know, the IRS, the, 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 the uh, um, many of the people auditing are, are, are very professional and they keep very good notes. So what you say will uh, kind of be used against you, although it's, it, it has an informal feeling to it. Mm -hmm. So... Um, at the same time, this is where you know may come in someone who's um, more knowledgeable with the tax law is you know um, what you don't say is used against you also because they're asking for information to verify what you've uh, admitted on your returns. Well, so let, let's let's say to this scenario, potential client comes in your office. Hey, Neil, I didn't file my returns for the past five years. Now, after you're done slapping them a little Correct. bit, what do you advise them to do in that situation? Um, so what I advise them to do is, because it, we don't have returns, is to, um, to not bury their heads in the sand because the IRS is not burying their heads in the sand. Um, and a lot of times people feel stuck. And the, the first thing to do is at least take action. And one of the things we do is um, they could come in, we'll discuss their situation, and we'll try to, uh, the IRS has transcripts of um, income that people receive through forms. You get you get like 1099s and W-2s and those types of things that IRS also gets. Um, that's how the IRS can oftentimes ver match what you have on your returns to make sure you're reporting correctly. What we do, uh, if, if, if I can access the transcripts, and I can look and see what's on file. Um, and then from that, we can determine whether they needed to file a returns. They usually do. Sometimes, actually, you know, they don't. Or sometimes it works out in their favor to file a return because perhaps they're entitled to a loss that they didn't notice. And other times, they would have to pay and they would be subject to a significant amount of penalties. But <clears throat> you have to kind of start somewhere and work through it. And if you have to set up some kind of plan with the IRS or whatever it is, um, it's important to do that to, to keep yourself in compliance, um, both civilly and also not to prevent further problems in case, you know, anything can happen. If I can paraphrase, them. it's almost like if you're, if you're in that situation, you're almost better off falling on the sword and saying, oops, I didn't do it. I'm going to start doing it rather than continuing to go into year six and year seven, not filing an income tax return. Correct. So um, that's what I do. But but the, the transcripts are kind of where I start. If I don't have a tax return first, I contact the IRS or I can access the transcripts online if I have a power of attorney and I, I review everything from there. And then a lot of times we can uh, work with a competent CPA who can reconstruct things um, in the best possible way. Audit is a very scary word, which is why I keep saying it, because, it, you know, scaring people gets people to watch, I suppose. But uh, <laughs> uh, can is it unusual for somebody to get audited? Like, for example, should every person watching here expect at least once in their life they're going to be audited, or is it somewhat unusual? It's somewhat unusual. Um, it, uh, very few people actually are audited. Um, so, so most people um, are, are not audited. Um, it's usually something we don't know exactly how the IRS, in some ways we do, but in a lot of ways we don't know exactly how the IRS figures out an audit. They have a kind of a secret formula. Um, but something wasn't right on their radar and they're looking into it. Um, and it, it's a very small percentage of people. Um, what a it's lot good of people, to know. Yeah, it's good to know. Um, <laughs> it's also good to know that audit, sometimes they'll use the term examination, and it's pretty much the same thing, audit and examination. 
Okay. Um, I know that confuses a lot of people. It confused me initially. So, um, but uh, although it's not an audit, a lot of people consider when they receive some kind of notice from the IRS to say, hey, you know, um, it, it's not an audit, but it's something saying, um, hey, you know, our records show that there's a they 1099 for $20,000. Um, and, uh, and, and, and you haven't reported it for 2018, you know, if, if you owe this amount, you know, with penalties, they'll compute the interest, please pay it. If, if not, please let provide us additional information. Um, you know, that happens much more frequently, but that can be resolved much easier than um, an in-person audit. Or, or even an audit, via, some audits are actually done just via mail-in. They don't actually involve an agent. Uh, an in-person agent. At the end of the day, Neil, if somebody is coming to see you, a mistake has been made. Can you tell everybody how they can avoid getting audited by the IRS? There's no uh, exact way to be audited. What you want to do is, in, in case you are, uh, first of all, follow all the rules. Um, follow all the tax law. Make sure you have really good uh, preparers that you, tax return preparers, accountants that you've researched and you know that they're good. And mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know they're all available. Their information is available online. And make sure that you know you don't have any that they that they actually sign the return with their names. Otherwise, they have what we call they call them ghost returns, where they'll just say, "Here, we prepared it." Here you go, and then they're using some kind of scam because they'll take a percentage of your refund, which you're not allowed to do. That's how they get paid, it, and they figure out how to enhance your refund. But what you want to do? So is any any see, any uh, tax preparer that's saying that they would take some of your refund, right? Run, correct. But what okay. you want to do? What you want to do is follow the law very well. Work very well with a CPA who follows the law. Um, possibly run a question past the tax attorney just to be sure. You know, if you want to. And um, if anybody here and, has a question about who, like a, for CPAs, uh, who would be a quality one, you know oh, several CPAs some yourself. Very, some great CPAs. Okay. So I, they could call you and ask? Absolutely. Okay. I'm Before I forget, what, what's your telephone? Number? Yes. So it's, um, you can either call me at 954-944-3929 or 561-948-2298. Um, Okay. One, um, and we'll post it on there right. as well. Right. But, you know, if somebody has some questions about their tax preparer, their CPA, you can refer them to a competent uh, oh, CPA sure. that you trust. Absolutely. Um, I think the other thing is, you know, how to avoid getting audited. That's the first thing. The second thing as well, you know, you want to keep very, very good records um, of your income and your expenses, uh, receipts, or whatever else, uh, in case you're audited. So you can provide that information if it comes down to it. And then, you know, you can sleep at night um, knowing, you know, that uh, you have the information to back you up. Um, well, that's, so, that's always good to have the backup. So, right. As a, as a, as a, as a back, <laughs> anything, so that backup so. plan is, is very, very important because uh, if you see this audit that you got here, mm -hmm. right? So um, a lot of the things that people don't have... Uh, uh, documentation for, you know, employee expenses. Um, probably they went out to eat and that kind of thing um, at, 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 for business um, as an employee. And uh, they didn't keep their receipts and say who they were, uh, you know, with whom they were eating and what uh, the meeting was about. Um, same thing with mileage, you know, or... Um, These days it's yeah. pretty easy to keep track of that too. You can just Put it on the notes on your iPhone uh, and right. save it that it, way. It, just to have them something. Exactly. I just, but, but you know, uh, be, be very clear what what everything was for, and you know, and keep honest. Um, but you are entitled to deductions. You are entitled to what's favorable to you tax wise. Um, you're not. You're not. Uh, you're not responsible for paying more than you owe. Mm -hmm. uh, the IRS shouldn't get a dollar or more from you than. They need to. At the same time, um, we need to stress that up front, you want to be honest and actually take what's legitimately yours. So it goes both ways, you know, to be fair on both sides. Absolutely. Um, well, Neil, let me ask you this. Everybody this time of year uh, that I talk to is, oh, I can't wait to get my refund and everything else. 
Should you want a refund? What does it mean if you got a refund? What it means if you got a refund, this is a very uh, interesting situation because uh, as of now, the numbers are showing that there are less refunds this year and uh, the refunds are smaller. So I'm sure a lot of us have been affected by that. A lot of people depend on refunds and see it as a really nice bonus for them to mm -hmm. um, uh, spend and you know, vacation or additions to their home or whatever it is, and they're seeing le less of it. But actually, um, if you got a refund, it means you overpaid the government during the year um, from your withholding from work or whatever else when the IRS withheld taxes. And they were able to have that money instead of you and maybe put it into an interest bearing account instead of you during those years when they were receiving all that money. And then now they're giving it back to you and you could have received all that money or at least had that money on hand. Um, that being said, people seem to be, uh, so you actually don't want a refund. You want to be as close to zero, the o o is zero tax as possible, right? Not a refund, but it's very hard. People, we, we tend to really like the refund and are willing to kind of say, okay, fine. Um, we'll, we'll let the government have the money. Um, and we'll be happy when we get a refund. Well, that's not a bonus. It's your money. It's not a bonus at all. It's your money. It's your money. Um, but people, uh, we become very attached in a way. I've joked with other prof tax professionals to say we've become very attached to our refunds. Um, I'm sure a significant part of the CPA's job um, is during tax season and afterwards, are to get you know emails and calls from people saying, "Where's my refund?" Um, so those refunds mean mean a lot to people. They really shouldn't, but. No matter how many times you say it, it know, doesn't I, seem to, to uh, seem to matter. Right. So actually, like uh, this year, if the refunds end up being lower and there are less of them, it was actually beneficial to 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 us as as U.S. taxpayers, right? Uh, because we got less of a refund, we paid less, we 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 uh, less ticket from our withholding, and the, the government it was detrimental to the government, right? Because then um they didn't get as much withholding that they could have used right maybe to pay down some of our deficit uh, <laughs> during that year but we weren't happy with it and they gave something that the people didn't like so it was a lose-lose in a way um although it could have been turned into a win-win yeah. um but people just love their refunds. And if we love them, you know. Better to have the money better to all, have the all money year than, round than, <laughs> and, than and, we, and the than government we, have the money too. Thanks for um, my money back. Um, well, that's how I see it. Yeah. yeah let, me, let me bring something up that pertains to my business as a personal injury lawyer. And I always tell this to my clients. Personal injury proceeds. You're involved in an auto accident and you get a settlement. Are the proceeds that you receive, the net proceeds, are they taxable? No. They're in not almost taxable. all instances, they are not taxable. And in fact, the medical bills that you have to pay out of the settlement, are those tax deductible? They are tax deductible, absolutely. Um, so it, I've been right it, all these years. Good. Well, yes. I mean, you have to, <laughs> you know, it's an interesting discussion because tax deductible meaning, you know, you still may have to meet certain standards to be able to take those deductions, but they are absolutely taxable. You should certainly give it to your CPA. Absolutely. Okay. Especially, you know, I'm sure you get people who have very significant um, tax Inter bills. Yeah. I mean, sorry, uh, okay. medical bills. Oh, yes, yeah. sometimes. And, and, sometimes, and, you know, and sometimes those, smaller, but sometimes they're monstrous. Correct. Yeah. So. And, and, and those may very well be like, uh, a, a, a nice tax benefit. That's why I always give the, the checks Absolutely. the checks to the clients. Absolutely. Now, Neil, I can't thank you enough for your time today, but I want to ask you real quick, and if you could make it very clear to anybody who's listening or watching, who is somebody that needs to hire somebody like you, a tax attorney? Who is, who would be somebody who needs, like you're at your type of client? Because not everybody needs a tax lawyer. Not everyone needs a tax lawyer. I think that if you feel upfront that you um, want to be open and say uh, and, and and have a matter that you think may be beneficial to be privileged, 
um, you may want to just pick up the phone and call and see if perhaps you could have a, a consultation, perhaps you're entering into a business agreement or um, making some kind of gift to someone or um, some other personal transaction. You just, you, you want to be sure. That's in the front end. And in the back end, uh, you know, if you do have IRS tax issues, if you owe IRS penalties, um, if you owe back interest, if you have back taxes, if you haven't filed returns that we've discussed, a lot of those things we can um, resolve or we can make better. Sometimes we can't, um, but at least we're moving forward. But, you know, a lot of times the penalties we'd be able to abate, which would then lessen the, the interest. We may be able to look at your information and find that you, by filing a return, you actually are owed money from the IRS. So those are the kind of people, if you're facing um, immediate collection issues from the IRS, um, you know, they're sending you a notice saying we're going to let you out of your assets. If you have received a, a, a notice that they filed a tax lien, a notice of tax lien on you, and you see that it's killed your credit score, um, we may want to see if there's a way that we can have it get that removed and withdrawn and removed from your uh, credit history. Um, I know, and you know, in Florida has the homestead law. Um, homestead law will not protect you from the IRS, will it? It will not. No, that's what I thought. How do you charge for your time, Neil? That's what people want to know. Yeah, that's always a big question. Yeah, right? it always comes yeah. up, and then I say it depends. But can you give us kind of an idea of what goes into d determining a charge? For your services sure so I'll, I'll talk to someone on the phone or, or or sometimes via email about their issue and sometimes i'll take an initial review of their documentation from the irs or tax returns um i'm not going to charge for that time then i if it's something that i think we can help uh help on we'll, we'll do a consultation um we'll, we'll say it's an hour it usually goes a little longer and that's okay and i charge 300 dollars for that um at this stage and then uh perhaps we can resolve the issue within that amount of time then we if we can't we have to set up some kind of retainer agreement um you know just depending on how much whether it's a thousand whether it's 2500 um or more I, you know because um you never know with the irs and you never know with the tax law what's going to happen um so that's how and then that's how I charge, and then I have to kind of work with people as we go as to how um, they they will pay because I can't put a cap, a ceiling on how high. It just depends what's going on um, in order to do my best job to protect people um, to ho hopefully lower their tax rates and their penalty rates and really protect them civilly and, and possibly even criminally. Um, I think that that carries a lot of weight. I would um, say so. And, I mean, and, 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 holding, and you're, yeah, no, you're, 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 you know, holding on to your money, on to your staying money. out of jail. Those are pretty important things. And sometimes, you know, your rights, meaning your right to privacy. Um, what the IRS can get into that you may want to say, hey, you know, you have no right to go there. So what you're saying is um, that I should not friend the IRS on Instagram, even though they have an Instagram. Yeah, it's like hilarious. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure it's like connect with taxpayers and be more friendly. But uh, yes, the IRS does have an Instagram page. Okay. So I'll, I'll make sure, so be I'm sure a, not to like it. I will unfollow it. Although I'm, I'm, follow, <laughs> I'm, although I'm sure it will provide very interesting um, information. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. Um, I think I'll call you for that, though. Actually, yeah, I get the I get the notices all day of what's going on in real time. So I, uh, well, I'll tell you anything interesting. Well, up. if anyone wants to get in touch with you, can you tell them again how to reach you, Neil? Yeah, sure. So you can call um, my cell or my my phone um, at nine five four nine four four three nine two nine or five six one nine four eight two two nine eight. You can also email me at nrumback at rumbacklaw.com. So that's N-R-U-M-B-A-K at R-U-M-B-A-K law.com. Um, and I'll be happy to talk to you. Well, again, thanks so much for being well, here, Neil. You, it's been a pleasure. Uh, this has been a lot of fun, a good discussion. Um, this is Neil Rumback, tax attorney. Uh, my name is Jeff Edelman. I'm a personal injury lawyer. I can always be reached at 954-341-2777 or email jeff at edelmanlawyers.com, A-D-E-L-M-A-N lawyers.com. I want to wish a very happy birthday to 
my dear friend, Iran Jerez. And good. yes, and I also want to wish the Lightning better luck in their oh, second game. Great. Last night, I know you were very upset. I'm a, and, I'm a uh, Lightning fan from Tampa, and it was a, a very uh, painful loss and unexpected last I night. think we should probably give a shout out to my cousin, Elliot Stern, as we well. We should. He made a connection <laughs> many, many years ago. <laughs> we were at the Elliot, my cousin, Elliot Stern's bar mitzvah. Many moons ago, we did not know each other back then, but we figured it out. Probably, what, 1993 or so? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think we all had some kind of hockey theme. Do we all? I, I, I had my... I prefer watching hockey. I don't play hockey, but, um, you know, I was a big hockey fan. Yeah, it was, I had it in 93 because I know it was at Bush Gardens, and I right. think it was the second year of the Lightning. Second, so, yeah, I moved to Tampa the first so, year of the Lightning. Hey, Elliot. Hey, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, give a uh, shout out to you. Absolutely. So. Well, hey, but thank you to everybody for watching or listening. Um, the replay will be available on the Facebook page and it'll also be available on podcast, iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. I'll be with you again next week, April 18th. We'll have Nancy Brodsky on, who is a family law attorney. We'll be talking about collaborative divorce, uh, ways of trying to keep your divorce expenses a little less than what they could be through a technique that she uses. And I'm looking forward to that. All right. Well, thank you again, Neil. Thank and, you. Um, you know, we'll definitely have to hang out after uh, April 15th. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.